this is the third video now on um, plant transport. Um, we're going to start looking at uh, water transport in this video and um, I expect it to be quite a long video um, so I'd advise you to take some notes uh, as we go through um, and ensure that you understand each section uh, before we move on to the uh, the next one. Um, I will add in some summary points as we go through the um, uh, different types of water transport. Okay. Um, at the end of the video as well, we'll look at some uh, typical water transport questions as well, uh, just to apply uh, what we've been um, talking about uh, to the questions set in exam papers. Okay, um, we need to split this um, video down into uh, different sections. Um, firstly, we need to look at um, how water uh, is taken up by a plant. Um, that's done by the roots and in particular the root hairs. Um, uh, once the water has been taken up by the root, it is then transported across the root. Um, so that's the first um, part that we're going to look at. It's really all to do with the root and how water enters and uh, transports across the root. Um, after that, we need to look at how water um, moves up the xylem. Um, and that's going to be split into three sections really because there are three main ways in which water is thought to move up the xylem. Um, this video does depend on you um, knowing the structure um, of plant tissue which was covered in uh, video number one. Um, so if we uh, make a start then on um, the root transport uh, of water. So um, we've got a picture here on the uh, left hand side, uh, number one, um, that shows uh, the image that was in video number one. It's the microscope image of the uh, cross section through a root. Um, what we've got to figure out uh, is how water enters uh, the root hairs, which will be around about there. This is the um, epidermis layer, okay, that would contain root hairs. So we need to look at how water gets into the root uh, initially. And then we're interested in how the water will travel all the way across the cortex uh, to the endodermis. Okay, uh, that's as far as we're going to go in this first section, right up to the uh, the endodermis. Um, the next part of the video will deal with water movement into the xylem and then water movement up the xylem. Okay, so we're really concerned with the cortex region and the uh, epidermal uh, region in this part of the video. Um, an important aspect of water transport through the root is the use of ions. Um, now, I'm going to talk about that um, later on, really, because that's quite involved, uh, and it's to do um, primarily in setting up a water potential gradient to allow water uh, to move. But before we get to that, what I want to really look at is um, diagram number two here okay uh, what this diagram is showing you uh, is a simplified version of a section through the root um, you can see that we have the epidermal cell here uh, with the root hair uh, projecting out of it uh, I have two cells that represent the cortex then I have the endodermis and I've also then put in the pericycle and the xylem vessel. Okay, uh, so just to remind you, if you're still not sure about the plant structures and the cell types, you can watch video number one again where I explain all these different uh, cell layers. Um, so the first uh, thing I want to point out is that water can travel across the, uh, the route via three different uh, pathways, as we call them. 
Um, and these pathways uh, are summarized here in words. Here's the name of the three pathways. Uh, we've got the apoplast pathway, the symplast pathway, and the vacuolar pathway. All they are are different um, locations within a plant cell, and they represent uh, the parts of a plant cell through which water is going to travel. And this is what I want to explain first. I want to explain where within the cells of a root water is actually found and where it is actually moving. Okay. Um, and you can get quite a lot of marks for this uh, in both short answer and long answer uh, exam questions. So if we go to the, the apoplast pathway first, um, this is represented uh, by the orange line in the diagram. So that orange line there represents the movement of water via this pathway called the apoplast pathway. Okay, so the apoplast pathway is really to do with water movement through the cell walls of the plant cell. Okay, so I'm actually showing the uh, cell wall here and the water is moving through it. Um, the structure of the cell wall, of course, is, is cellulose fibres and there's lots of gaps between those cellulose fibres that allow water to actually move through um, the cell walls. Um, this is the major pathway through which water uh, moves. You're talking about at least 90% of the plant's water will move via the apoplast pathway. Okay, so in an exam uh, you need to state that uh, water can move uh, through the cell walls of plant cells and this is called the apoplast pathway and that will often get you two marks uh, in an exam. Uh, the second most common way that water can move is via the symplast pathway, uh, which is in uh, pink. Um, this is the uh, pathway where water will move through the cytoplasm of cells and it will actually travel through uh, the plasmodesmata, which are the small gaps between uh, cells uh, within a plant. Now, there will be um, a cell membrane there, okay, so water will actually go through the plasmodesmata via osmosis, because it's a semi-permeable membrane. Um, so in an exam, if you're asked about the symplast pathway, you just say it's water movement through the cytoplasm via the plasmodesmata. Don't forget to mention the plasmodesmata. You'll normally get a mark for that. So that pink line there represents the symplast pathway. Uh, the last uh, pathway is known as the vacuolar pathway. Uh, this is a minor um, pathway through which water moves. Uh, it's represented by the blue line and it's really water movement via the vacuoles uh, within the plant cells. So there's the three um, pathways through which water uh, will move um, through the root. Um, I now want to um, tell you a little bit more about uh, the apoplast pathway. Now you have the, the three pathways explained. Um, this again links um, with video number one where I explain what the endodermis was and also what the Casparian strip was as well. Okay, so this is a very important aspect now of the apoplast pathway because if you concentrate on the orange line again, you can see that when water enters the endodermal cell, it can no longer move through the apoplast pathway because the Casparian strip uh, is blocking water movement via the cell walls. And what's happening is um, the water will be diverted from the apoplast into the symplast pathway. So you can see the orange arrow there. It's going from the cell wall into the cytoplasm. Um, that's quite an important um, aspect of water movement through the root. And you need to mention it if you're asked about apoplast pathways 
Okay. So I just want to remind you that that Casparian strip is made of Subarin. It's a waterproofing material and it prevents um, the apoplast pathway um, continuing in the endodermis. Okay, um, one other thing is really um, to mention the, the, the other function of that uh, Casparian strip. In addition to preventing the apoplast pathway, uh, it also has a role in the regulation of ions through the plant. Um, uh, that's quite important that plant regulates its ions. Um, so that would be the second function uh, of the Casparian strip. Now, we will mention um, a little bit more about the Casparian uh, strip and the endodermis later. And we'll also mention a little bit about the pericycle later because they have uh, an important function in actually allowing water to enter the xylem. Okay, so I'll talk about those cells more when we talk about uh, water transport up the xylem. Okay, so that's... Um, that's quite a large chunk done really of uh, water transport through the root uh, is to mention these uh, three different pathways um, and also about the um, Casparian strip. The next thing to do is uh, to look at um, how exactly water gets into the uh, root uh, initially. Okay, and that involves um, the use of ions, really. Um, so, if we look at um, uh, diagram number one, what we're interested in now is this um, epidermal layer, and in particular, the root hairs that come out of that epidermal layer. Um, water has to enter uh, the root from the soil, and for water to get into the root hair, uh, it has to have a water potential gradient uh, in order for it to move in by osmosis. Um, so the first thing that has to happen um, to allow that to occur is the active transport of ions from the soil into uh, the um, root hair cell. Okay, so I just want to show you um, a little diagram to explain this uh, ion aspect of uh, water uptake in the root. Um, we've got an epidermal cell here, uh, got the root hair coming out, and we've got soil particles in brown surrounding the root hair. Uh, the black dots represent the various ions within the water. Okay, and what's happening is, number one, in uh, pink, you get the active transport of ions into the root hair cell. Uh, this lowers the water potential within the root hair cell. And number two, you have water entering the root hair by osmosis down a water potential gradient. Okay, so um, if you get an essay on this uh, topic, it is vital that you talk about the ions. Uh, and some questions actually explicitly tell you to talk about the ions anyway. So, uh, we've managed to get water into the root hair. Now, uh, we know how that water travels across the root in terms of the pathways. Okay, so we go back to the previous uh, diagrams. Uh, we now have water in, okay, uh, pen. So water has gone in uh, to that uh, root hair cell. We know that it travels through those three different pathways uh, all the way to the endodermis. However, we do need to be aware of the simplas pathway again, uh, because this is the movement uh, of water by osmosis through the cytoplasm of the uh, cells. So what you need to know is that across the whole cortex of the root there is actually uh, one big uh, water potential gradient. Okay, So uh, this water potential gradient across the cortex is established by um, ions 
uh, within the cells of the cortex. Okay, uh, so basically, um, down here by the root hair cell, you'll have a lower uh, concentration of ions, and up here near the endodermis, actually, you'll get a, a, a much higher concentration of ions and that ultimately leads to this water potential gradient so uh, because you have uh, less ions uh, here uh, by the root hair cell you've got the higher water potential and um, down here by the endodermis you have the higher concentration of ions um, that means you've got a lower water potential, so water moves from high water potential down by the root hair um, to lower water potential down by the endodermis. Uh, and of course that's by osmosis. Okay, so um, we're, we're almost there really with describing how water enters and crosses the root. Uh, there's just one more thing. Um, I'd like to talk about in this section and that's a little bit more about the uh, the endodermis uh, and the pericycle and a little bit about the xylem now technically these are going to be a part of the the next um, water movement section which is up the xylem um, but I just want to point out that uh, the endodermis um, actually actively pumps in ions here as well so there's a a second place where active transport of ions occurs firstly it was into the root hair and secondly it is into the endodermal cells as well uh, and that's ultimately what lowers the water potential again as i mentioned a moment ago uh, that creates this water potential gradient across the root uh, cortex uh, what happens next then, once the ions are pumped into this endodermis, they actually uh, enter the pericycle and uh, they are then actively transported uh, into the xylem. Um, and that really marks the point where we have to talk about uh, water movement at the xylem. Okay, so uh, what I've just mentioned there is a link between uh, root transport and water transport in the xylem and I'll pick up that uh, in a moment. So um, there's a fair amount of information there about uh, this part of plant transport uh, so on this page I'm just going to write another couple of summary points um, just to help you out but again you need to be making your own notes uh, as we go through this video. So the uh, summary points are now on screen. Um, just want to emphasize that the, they are a summary uh, uh, set of points. Uh, you need to make your own notes as well from the points I've mentioned during the video. Okay. Um, we will look at an essay question at the end um, on this topic and I will show you the mark scheme as well uh, and that will give you um, uh, an idea of what you need to include in any potential answer on this topic. Okay, uh, so that's uh, water transport across the route uh, all done. Uh, we're now going to move on to water transport up the xylem. Okay, uh, there are three uh, main ways in which water moves up the xylem. Uh, there are two very minor ways which don't play a great part uh, in xylem movement. Uh, and the last one, uh, called the cohesion tension theory, is the major, major way in which water moves. So I'm going to start off looking at the two uh, minor ways. Okay, uh, the first one here is root pressure. Okay, now this um, root pressure uh, links to what I mentioned a moment ago about the uh, endodermis, the pericycle, and the active transport of ions into the xylem. Okay, that uh, that forms a part of this root uh, pressure um, mechanism. Uh, really, then, what uh, what this is all about is there were some initial experiments done where, uh, if you look at uh, diagram number one, uh, you took a plant and you uh, you cut cut the stem and you cut all the leaves off it and you were just left with a with a stump basically on the uh, on the cut stem and what was observed is 
uh, water would start oozing out of the cut part of the stem. Now there was nothing else on the plant uh, to actually cause that mo uh, that water movement. So the theory was that it was root pressure. Okay, and a part of this theory was that there was an active transport mechanism occurring that allowed this water to uh, to move and uh, exude from the cut part of the stem. So they found that out by uh, adding cyanide uh, to the cut stem. When they added cyanide, they found that no uh, water actually came out of the cut part of the stem. So that proved that this was some sort of active transport process. And what is happening in reality is um, to do with the movement of ions uh, from the endodermis to the pericycle and then from the pericycle to um, the xylem and it's the it's the active transport of ions from the pericycle into the xylem that is um, part of this root pressure um, theory okay so that's why um, ATP is needed really it's an active transport process and it's because of the active transport of ions into the xylem from the pericycle um, so this root pressure then, if we have a look at uh, diagram number two, um, what it is really is a pushing force that seems to push water um, from the root up the xylem. So I've drawn out this diagram to help explain this um, concept for us. So this blue box here is actually the uh, pericycle, okay, which is in the root. Um, the blue arrows there will represent um, the uh, osmotic movement of water into the xylem. Remember that water can enter the xylem because you also have the active transport of ions into the xylem, uh, which lower the water potential. Okay, so as water moves in, all right, you can see we have a water level here. So as water moves in, you actually get the water already in the xylem being pushed up. Okay, and that's why on this second diagram here, I've drawn the water level a bit higher in the xylem. It's just to show that uh, there's a pushing force, if you like, pushing water up the xylem as water enters the xylem uh, from the pericycle. Okay, so that's, um, that's really all you need to know about root pressure. Um, it doesn't account for a lot of xylem movement, but it is present as these initial experiments shown in diagram one uh, prove. So um, please make some notes on, uh, on root pressure as well before uh, you move on. Um, the next minor uh, mechanism is uh, something called capillarity. Okay, now to understand capillarity, um, I think we need to have a, a little summary or revision really of water and a quick revision of uh, xylem just briefly. Uh, capillarity then um, involves water molecules and the two uh, forces that um, water molecules can form. Uh, the first uh, forces are these cohesive forces, also known as hydrogen bonds. Uh, these are the forces that hold water molecules together uh, because water is a polar molecule, which means it has slightly positive hydrogens and slightly negative uh, oxygens. Okay. So that's the... Um, cohesive forces between the uh, water molecules, uh, also known as hydrogen bonds. Um, the other aspect of water that we need to know about in order to understand capillarity uh, is shown in diagram number two over on the right. Um, and this also uh, allows us to have some xylem revision. Okay. Um, Xylem, if you remember, is made up or has this secondary thickening of lignin. Okay, now lignin happens to be hydrophilic, which means it can actually form interactions with water. And those 
interactions between the water and the lignin of the xylem are known as adhesive forces. Okay, so these are the forces that hold or attract water molecules to the actual wall of the xylem. Okay, um, now this phenomena where water is attracted to the xylem vessel wall is something that can be done in glass tubes known as capillary tubes. Okay, and I'll show a diagram of this in a moment. Um, but this th this adhesive force uh, forms the basis of this capillarity, along with the cohesive forces as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so just to remind you, then the adhesive forces um, are attractions, um, attractive forces between water molecules and the hydrophilic. Uh, lignin of the xylem okay so how does all of this then um, work together to form this capillarity mechanism well if we have a look at these two diagrams now we've got diagram one here and diagram two what we have is a series of tubes uh, of different diameters okay and what you can see is that in each of the tubes there is water um, going up the tube. In the large tube, the water has travelled uh, the least. Okay. The middle tube, which is slightly narrower, the water has travelled slightly higher. And on the last and the third tube, which is the narrowest, uh, the water has travelled up the tube uh, the furthest. Okay. So this is the um, representation of capillarity. It's the movement of water up a very narrow tube, which is what the xylem is. It is a narrow tube uh, due to the adhesive forces between the water and the wall of the xylem. But it's also due to the cohesive forces between the water molecules. OK, because as water moves up uh, the xylem vessel, because of the adhesive forces, other water molecules are pulled along with it because they're all stuck by these um, uh, cohesive forces or hydrogen bonds. Okay. Uh, so if I just uh, show you this diagram again, remember that's the the cohesive forces. So water is all joined together. So as the water molecules move up the xylem, uh, because they are sticking. Uh, to the wall of the xylem by adhesive forces, the other water molecules are pulled up because they're joined together by cohesive forces. Okay, um, so that's what diagram number one is showing. Uh, diagram number two, uh, I've blanked out uh, a labeling here uh, because we don't need to know uh, the other labeling. Uh, what I'm interested in is this gravity labeling here. Um, what capillarity um, can actually do as well is that it can actually prevent the column of water in the xylem from falling down and, and going back down to the roots. Because what you've got, you've got gravity applying a force to the water, okay? And because the water is stuck to the walls of the xylem by adhesive forces, uh, the water is prevented from actually moving back downwards. And uh, there has been a question um, recently about uh, this very thing, about how or what force uh, prevents water from uh, moving back down the xylem due to gravity. Uh, and that would be the adhesive forces okay, present. Uh, so that's capillarity. Um, it's a very, very minor way in which water moves through um, the xylem. And um, the narrower the tube, the, the higher the water will move. But um, the xylem itself, um, I think from memory, will only allow maybe about 30 centimetres worth of movement uh, via capillarity uh, because the xylem's... Uh, are narrow, but they're not that narrow, okay? They could be a lot narrower to help uh, water move up by capillarity. So there's the two minor 
um, mechanisms. Uh, again, if you just make a couple of summary points um, from what I've said, um, it's not often asked in exams, but again, you do need to be aware of them. It is on the Welsh Joint Syllabus. Um, once you've, once you're happy with uh, what we've done so far, we're going to go on to the the biggest chunk of this uh, video now, which is to look at the cohesion tension theory. Okay, so uh, lastly, then the cohesion tension theory. Um, we'll go through this uh, slowly and methodically. Um, and for this part, I will make um, a couple of summary points uh, to help you out. Um, so let me take you through this diagram that I'm going to use to explain this theory. OK, uh, down here in the root, OK, that's the pericycle. OK, uh, we're not really going to be discussing that anymore. Um, in green here, we have the xylem vessel. OK, uh, the brown dots are the water molecules, OK, which uh, haven't labelled. OK, so that's the water molecule in brown. Um, the blue lines between the water molecules there are the hydrogen bonds. OK, now what I haven't shown in this diagram, of course, are the adhesive forces between the water and the wall of the xylem. I haven't shown them. They are there, all right, but for this um, theory, we're just interested in the um, cohesive forces or the hydrogen bonds. Okay, and the uh, other part of this diagram then is uh, the leaf uh, up here in pink. Um, this is also a vital part of the um, cohesion tension theory um, and in fact is going to be our starting point uh, to explain this theory as well. And we also need uh, high temperatures or heat uh, from the sun. So the first thing I want to say is that the water within the xylem forms what's known as a continuous column of water. It's generally unbroken and all the water molecules are joined together by cohesive forces. So here represents a single column of water. That column of water is continuous with the cells within the leaf. All right, so you can see again, all the water molecules in the leaf are joined to the water molecules in the xylem. All right, so we've got this continuous column running from the leaf all the way down the xylem. All right, and all the water molecules are joined by cohesive forces. So obviously we want this water uh, column to move upwards. OK, and the starting point for that is high temperature or heat from the sun because this produces um, the required process to start off the cohesion tension theory. All right, and that's down here. If you see these two water molecules, number one and number two, uh, you can see the hydrogen bonds between them. Those water molecules have left the cells of the leaf. They've left because the heat from the sun has evaporated them. So these water molecules represent uh, gaseous water, water vapour. OK, so it's the evaporation of water molecules from the cells of the leaf that start off this whole co uh, cohesion tension theory. OK, because as water molecule number one here evaporates, because it is joined to water molecule number two by cohesive forces, water molecule number two is pulled, and that's a key term here, is pulled with it. All right. It's very much like uh, a load of people holding hands and the first person in the line, whenever they move, they pull the person behind them with them. OK, so that's what these cohesive forces are doing. They're pulling water molecules um, 
as one water molecule evaporates. So what happens then, that, that water molecule number two, you can see I've put some hydrogen bonds there, but those are actually attached now to water molecule number three. All right, so basically, water molecule number three will also be pulled out of that um, leaf cell as it evaporates. Okay, so what you've got is this pulling effect, which uh, is transmitted all the way down the xylem. Okay. So all of this pollen is transmitted all the way down the xylem, okay, um, because the water molecules are hydrogen bonded together. So that pollen, because it's transmitted all the way down, will ultimately cause water to be pulled up the xylem. <coughs> so I've added... Um, uh, a couple of uh, summary points to my two uh, arrows there, the blue and the green arrow. Um, just to say that you get this pulling force being transmitted down the uh, column of water. And number two, that ultimately causes water molecules to be pulled up uh, due to the cohesive forces between uh, the water molecules. All right, so that's what that green line is. It's the pulling up of the water molecules. So, so far, what, what we've actually discussed is, is all to do with the cohesion part of this theory, okay, um, which, which is everything we've spoken about so far. Uh, what we need to address is this um, part uh, called the tension part of this theory. Um, now, really, what that means is, is that as the water column is pulled, um, it's it's being um, put under tension, which is uh, a pulling or stretching force, really. Um, just to sort of help you with that, I've taken some pictures of elastic bands, really. Okay, where uh, elastic band there, number one, um, is not under tension. You can see that um, it's all floppy. Uh, the elastic band is, is quite uh, thick there. But in number two... Um, I've stretched the elastic band or I've applied a tension to it and you can see that it has stretched and it's become slightly narrower. Okay, um, now that's what's happening uh, with the water column in this cohesion tension theory. Um, there are very significant forces uh, being created by this uh, theory. Um, there's a there's a tremendous amount of tension being applied to this water column, okay, and uh, the tension of course is is created because of this pulling effect. Um, this tension is so extreme that um, during the day, uh, the diameter of uh, a tree trunk can actually narrow because uh, each xylem vessel. Is being slightly narrowed because of this um, tension being created in the water column. Uh, the reason why that happens is <clears throat> as the water column is is under tension it stretches somewhat and it becomes a bit narrower just just like this elastic band if I show you that again. All right so that band there number two can be the stretched water column and, and it's become slightly narrower. So what you've got to remember is that all of the water molecules are attached to the um, wall of the xylem by adhesive forces. So they're stuck there. So what's happening is as the column of water gets narrower, it actually pulls the xylem in slightly. Okay, so the xylem slightly narrows. And this is... Uh, been asked once or twice in an exam they, they ask you know why doesn't the xylem collapse due to this extreme tension being created well the xylem doesn't collapse because of this lignin again all right we've mentioned lignin quite a lot in this video and in video number one um just to remind you it's a waterproof material Okay, so it doesn't allow water to, to pass through it. 
Um, in this video, we've said it's hydrophilic. Okay, so that allows the adhesive forces uh, to be formed between the water molecules. And now it's a third function. It's an incredibly strong material and it provides extra support uh, to the xylem to prevent collapsing during this uh, cohesion tension theory of water movement up the xylem. Right, I hope that has made some sense because that basically is the cohesion tension theory. Um, I'm going to make um, a couple of summary points on this, just under this diagram, and then we can uh, tackle a few uh, past paper questions. Okay, so there's um, some summary points uh, for the cohesion tension theory. Um, Okay, just to remind you, um, you need to maybe watch this video over several times just so you get all the correct um, uh, important points uh, written down. Um, we're going to move on now to look at some uh, past paper questions uh, and hopefully that will help you judge exactly what you need to know um, and what you need to note down for um, any potential uh, past paper question. So um, the first question I'd like to look at is the uh, essay question um, based on uh, water uptake and water movement uh, through the route. Uh, so here it is. Um, okay, for seven marks you're asked to describe the uptake of water for, by plants from the soil into the xylem so they want you to include the xylem there uh, but only into it so you don't have to talk about any um, sort of cohesion tension theory or capillarity or anything like that um, the next one for three marks is explain the role of ions in this process uh, so the mark scheme is here on the on the right um, okay so you can look at that uh, yourself, but uh, I've mentioned everything really on this uh, mark scheme. Okay, um, talked about apoplast pathway, talked about um, uh, symplast pathway or the symplast route. Uh, that's the movement through the cytoplasm via the plasma desmata, and of course, it involves the plasma membrane as well. Okay, and it's all by osmosis that. Um, we've got the Casparian strip there in the endodermal cells. They even give you a mark for saying it's made of subrin or waterproofing. And the function of the um, Casparian strip, so it stops the apoplast root, forces the water into the symplast uh, pathway. Uh, so the marking scheme is pretty straightforward. I've covered everything in the uh, video. Um, Part uh, B of this uh, essay then for three marks is to do with all the ions. Okay, so we've talked about ions being actively transported into the root hairs, lowering the water potential. Talked about the endodermis, okay, and the ions there. Uh, talked about ions going through into the pericycle and then into the xylem. Talked about lowering water potentials in the xylem, okay. And uh, we talked about this last point here, P, about there being a water potential gradient throughout the route. Um, so have a little look at that mark scheme uh, in your own time. Um, perhaps uh, rewind the video and uh, go over or re-listen to some of the points you may not understand. Okay, so this next question then uh, is actually part B of a question. Uh, part A was uh, to do with um, other aspects that we haven't covered in this video. Um, so what they've got here really is um, uh, it's showing cells uh, from the root of a plant in longitudinal section. Okay, so this uh, this should look familiar. It's very similar to what I've drawn out uh, in the video earlier. Okay. Um, so very briefly then, it's asking you to name structures Q and R, okay. So Q, of course, would be the plasmodesmata. That's what joins the cytoplasm of neighbouring cells. R, 
all right you've got um a sort of blocked out region within the cell wall uh, so that's got to be the casparian strip okay part two explain how the loss of water molecules from the leaves causes water to flow as indicated by arrow t so there's arrow t there it's actually showing water movement uh, up the xylem okay so um you're told that there is water loss all right and they're asked then to explain how it causes water movement um for one mark then you have to say that all water molecules are joined together by cohesive forces okay and when water um, is lost from the leaves uh, every water molecule is pulled up the xylem okay so that would be uh, the second mark there with the uh, water being pulled up the xylem part three um, it's asking you to um, draw onto the diagram now um, labeling the apoplast pathway and the symplast pathway okay um, so if I try and draw um, some reasonable diagrams here or lines um, in blue then what I'm drawing here is uh, the apoplast pathway in blue it's going through the cell wall and when we get to the casparian strip the water is diverted into the um, cytoplasm the next one then is the symplast pathway if i change the color the pen uh, here we go uh, make sure now you go through the plasmodesmata okay you've got to go through there all right and they only want you to go to cell three so you don't need to go any further uh, make sure you label those lines because you won't get any marks otherwise uh, so there's the uh, apoplast and the symplast pathways um, okay next then um, structure RNS are made of two different substances that share a physical property what property do these substances share well the property is that they are waterproofing layers okay uh, remember that um, the Casparian strip is made of subarin and the uh, substance in the xylem is lignin. Different um, substances, but they have the same property of providing waterproofing um, properties. Okay. Uh, lastly, then, why is this property important for the function of R? Uh, well, R, of course, is the um, Casparian strip okay um, it's important because it diverts water from the apoplast pathway into the symplast pathway okay um, and that's really the end of that um, question i think again pretty straightforward if you understand uh, the various pathways and understand the um, waterproofing material in plants so um, the next question then um, you've got a diagram of um, section through uh, the root okay and um, this first part really is testing you on your ability to identify uh, the various cell layers uh, within the root um, so a then uh, where's a uh, there okay uh, you're asked what layer um, or what structures uh, is represented by a uh, that would be the endodermis okay um, out of interest sake that layer there is going to be the pericycle and then you've got the xylem all right so you could have worked it out because they did give you the xylem there uh, b would be the cortex uh, c would be the casparian strip and D would be the uh, epidermis, okay, because you can see you've got the root hair coming out there. Okay, um, part B then, the iron concentration in the root hair is greater than in the soil. Explain this difference. Okay, well, we've mentioned this today. It's to do with the active transport of ions into the root hair from the soil, 
Okay, so that's the difference. They've been actively transported in. Uh, next then, name and describe two main pathways by which ions move across B. Uh, B, of course, was the uh, the cortex here. A um, little bit tricky, this one, uh, if you're not careful. It's actually four marks. Okay. And what you've got to appreciate is um, ions dissolve in water. So the movement of water will also involve the movement of ions okay so uh, the answer to this of course is the apoplast and the symplast pathways they would be the main pathways that ions move um, so you get one mark for mentioning apoplast one mark for mentioning symplast and then a description of each of those pathways so remember that the apoplast is um, movement through the cell wall and the symplast is movement um, through the cytoplasm via the plasmodesmata. All right, and that's where you get your four marks from there. Okay, part C of this question then. Um, it's telling you the concentration of ions in cell labelled X was found to be 80 millimoles per decimeter cubed and in the soil water surrounding the root it was 0.16 millimoles per decimeter cubed. Um, by how many times had the concentration increased? Um, so let's just look at um, cell X. Uh, that's the one there. Uh, it's right up by um, the endodermis. Okay, so uh, simple maths really. Uh, the answer is uh, 500 times because all you have to do is divide 80 by 0.16 and that will give you 500 times. So this is what I was telling you earlier is that there was a, a difference in concentration of ions across the cortex of the root. Um, the the next question here is asking you uh, why are increasing iron concentrations across region be important to the functioning of the plant well it's to do with water movement obviously uh, so one mark is uh, to say that it allows water to enter the root by the root hair okay and the other reason again it was mentioned earlier in the video it provides a water potential gradient down which water will move uh, by osmosis of course okay right part three structure c contains the waterproof substance subarin uh, what effect does this have on the water sorry on the movement of solutions into the root okay um it blocks the apoplast pathway okay and uh, it diverts the water into the symplast pathway okay uh, what is the importance of this effect all right um, it adds some regulation or control over the movement of water and also of the movement of ions actually okay um, the other importance of this feature is that it diverts water from the cell wall which is non-living uh, into the cytoplasm which is living as well so there's uh, a couple of important features of this um, uh, effect of the um, subarin lastly then um, this uh, this question um, it's saying now the cohesion tension theory explains the movement of water up the xylem of the plant explain what is meant by cohesion um, well, that's simply it's the, um, the the forces that hold the water molecules together. OK, so that's the answer to part D1. Uh, number two, explain how tension is generated. Um, well, one mark if you said that water molecules are evaporating from the cells of the leaf. OK, and um, the second mark is to say that uh, the water molecules are pulled up the xylem because of they are, because they're all joined together by these cohesive uh, forces. Okay. Um, 
Part 3 then, what additional force helps to support the water molecules in the xylem against the force of gravity? Okay, if you remember I did mention when we were looking at capillarity that uh, you will or may have a question about the force of gravity preventing water moving back down uh, the xylem. So what additional force uh, prevents this? It's actually the adhesive forces that are... Uh, form between the water molecules and the wall of the xylem. Okay. Uh, the values, um, uh, this part of the question here um, relates to a graph um, earlier on in the question which I haven't shown you. Uh, but basically it says uh, the values plotted on the graph never fall to zero. Uh, this suggests that throughout the 24 hour period a constant additional small force is influencing the upward movement of water. So the graph was actually looking at the water movement through a plant over 24 hours, um, which included um, periods of night. Okay, And what you've got to remember is that during the period of night, uh, there's less temperature, there's uh, less heat. So um, the evaporation of water is greatly reduced in the night. So the cohesion tension theory of water movement is a lot less during the night. So water movement is still moving as it said so you've got to name this additional force that helps water movement. Um, that one there is the root pressure. Okay that's the, the pushing force uh, from the roots. Um, you're asked then to explain how this force is generated. Uh, one mark if you said there is active transport of ions um, from the root into the xylem. Okay. And the second mark is to say that this creates a water potential gradient that allows water to enter the xylem by osmosis. Okay. Um, right, we've zipped through those questions quite rapidly. Um, you may want to uh, look over them again um, and write down the answers for yourself. I am going to include a PDF of this um, uh, slideshow um, so you can either print that out uh, or electronically look at it to uh, view the images um, and my comments as well. So that really is the last video in um, water transport. Um, hopefully it helped.